Films in Focus with David Sterrett is underwritten by The Movie House, your destination for first-run Hollywood and independent movies, and a digital portal to the Met Opera, National Theater Live, and special events worldwide in Millerton, New York, and on the web, themoviehouse.net. David Sterrett is the editor-in-chief of the Quarterly Review of Film and Video, contributing writer at Cineast, film professor at the Maryland Institute College of Art, and we're possessed of Robin Hood Radio's very own critic. He joins us weekly. The films... Roll, Red Roll, Babylon, and Climax. Hi, David. Hi, Jill. How are you doing this week? I swell. As I indicated, this one was so easy that I didn't even bother. You can just roll those titles. Right up, into up. each other without punctuation, pretty much. There you go. Yep, to a yep, climax. Yep. The yep. first one, actually, is a three-word title, which has no punctuation. Roll, Red Roll, uh, which is a documentary uh, by Nancy Schwartzman. And uh, it's a pretty harrowing thing. I have to say all three of the films I want to talk about today, which are all out right now, are, are, are harrowing movies. They're not exactly fun watches, although, well, maybe the third one is in certain respects. Anyway, Roll, Red Roll is a documentary, and it is about a horrifying rape that took place uh, in the town of Steubenville, Ohio. And uh, there they have the high school has a football team. And of course, the football players are beloved by the town. But it turns out uh, that a horrifying rape took place uh, at or after a party where there was a lot of drinking going on. And uh, some of the high school football team uh, was uh, two, two of the uh, of, of the prime suspects for this uh, were members of the football team. And uh, then there was, you know, there were arrests and trials trials and all that sort of thing. Uh, but what this this uh, movie is about, what Roll Red Roll is really, a, and by the way, that's the, 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 the sort of sheer slogan of the football team. Uh, Roll Red Roll is uh, not just about the, uh, the, the horrifying rape that took place and the, the crime and the, the, the police investigation and the arrests and so forth and so on, but it's very much about the social media um, aspect of all of this. And uh, the movie begins with some really, really uh, awful stuff. And you hear it again later on in the movie. Uh, you hear uh, recordings uh, of these high school kids uh, laughing and uh, th in the aftermath of this and saying things like, this is the funniest thing ever. And she is so raped right now, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, we then learn a lot of the facts about what, what actually happened here, uh, that this girl who, who is identified in the movie, uh, she's not identified, she's always referred to as Jane Doe, uh, got drunker and drunker and drunker and then got raped. And uh, these kids, some of these kids found this a hilarious thing and, oh, we are so outrageous and all this happened. And uh, uh, the, the movie deals largely with that. And it also deals uh, with a local blogger uh, who deals with crime, whose name is Alexandria Goddard, and uh, she deals a lot with crime cases. And uh, she uh, went to enormous lengths to go through all this social media stuff uh, that was posted uh, by these kids. And only by doing this, by this exhaustive, time-consuming process, was she able to put together an actual timeline of what happened here uh, and then she started publishing all of this stuff and putting some of the horrifying stuff that these kids had posted uh, onto onto the, the the web and then of course she came under attack by a lot of people in the town uh, who were remaining loyal to their boys and all of that so that is all of that stuff is what roll red roll is about uh, the case itself is absolutely horrifying and there's a whole lot of really compelling stuff in the movie the movie itself is not original as a documentary uh and ultimately it kind of it, it kind of loses its momentum after a while and becomes less revelatory i wish it were shorter uh than it is uh still it's a very uh, revealing movie uh, even though i wish it were more revelatory it's a very revealing movie uh, not only about uh, what is now often nowadays called rape culture that can exist even in you know nice midwestern towns uh but also very much about the role that social media played both in bringing out some of the the horrifying aspects of what some of these perpetrators were capable of, but also in helping to lead to their undoing. So uh, an interesting movie. I wish it were better made as a movie, but an interesting movie and certainly well worth looking at uh, by anyone who wants to keep up with what's going on in the social media world. Roll, red, roll. Interesting movie. Babylon. 
another interesting movie. Uh, this one is uh, directed and co-written by a filmmaker who is since deceased named Franco Rosso. And this movie actually dates from 1980. But uh, in all of the years since then, uh, almost 30 years, the movie has never been released theatrically in the United States until now because when it was finished, it was considered uh, just kind of too, too outrageous in some ways. And uh, there, were, there was reluctance to actually sink the investment into giving it a full theatrical release. Uh, so what we have is uh, the main character is a guy whose name is David, I'm happy to report. Uh, and he is a, uh, a, a, a musician. Uh, a, uh, a a young black musician. Uh, this movie is very much about uh, the reggae s- uh, scene uh, in, in in West London back in the in the ni- in very early 1980s. Again, the movie was made in 1980. Uh, so he is a, a musician, uh, also a worker, uh, a mechanic, and uh, he's uh, sort of a disc jockey and a sort of all around uh, presence at a local uh, dance palace. And uh, what we have is. Uh, these uh, David and, and friends of his who are uh, you know having a rough time of it. Uh, there is a lot of race prejudice that is going on in turns out in West London in 1980, and uh, these kids have a you know, young adults uh, has, are facing all kinds of challenges. They're trying to make it in the music scene. They're trying to improve their prospects in that area. They're also just trying to earn a living and do their jobs, and they have romantic problems and things like that. And uh, that is what the movie is about. So the movie has yeah a whole lot. Of, uh, of music in it, uh, some of which is uh, very, uh, very very fetching, and I had a good time with it. It was a long time since I've listened to a whole lot of reggae, uh, but I had a good time listening to it. And the movie is very much a time capsule of what race relations were like in one, ma- one, one part of one major city, London, uh, way back around 30 years ago. And boy, there's a lot of stuff in the movie which is so recognizable from the United States today. So I think that it's a very timely for this movie to have a release, even if it is 30 30 years late. It's very much worth seeing if you're interested in this sort of material. Again, it is not the work of a virtuoso filmmaker. It has a lot of energy. It has a lot of drive. It has a lot of audiovisual pizzazz. It's not great cinema, all that said. Uh, But it has some very real seeming performances by some very talented young performers, most of whom certainly are not familiar nowadays. Uh, And uh, again, I think that the main contribution this movie has to make to present day American culture is that it shows that uh, what goes around comes around and there is nothing new under the sun. There's a whole lot of the stuff in this movie about not only the hardships of young people, but also the harsh realities of a racist culture, which again are all too similar to stuff that we see in the United States today. So Babylon, I'm really glad that it's finally around on American screens and I hope it prospers. It really does deserve to be seen. Third movie I want to talk about today, like Babylon, has a one-word title, and it is called Climax, and it is a movie by the uh, the notorious Gaspar Noé. Gaspar Noé, I want to talk a bit about him, a very, very, very interesting filmmaker in all kinds of ways, both problematic and uh, and, and legit. Uh, originally from Argentina, based in Paris now for many years, he makes French movies, uh, and he uh, kind of burst, well, he didn't burst on the scene, he first emerged on the scene many a long year ago. Uh, with uh, a movie called, a short movie, a short film called Carne, C-A-R-N-E. And it was the story of a very nasty butcher and his daughter and various things that happen to them and that they do. And uh, I found it a very, very impressive movie. Impressive partly because it was simply outrageous uh, and impressive also because it was really, really well made. A very, very interesting movie. Again, this this movie came out in the very early 1990s. Uh, A few years later, later, uh, in the very late 1990s, uh, Noe was able to make a feature-length version of the story that he told in that short film, and it was called I Stand Alone. And it got a lot of attention. It was uh, received as kind of a very major art film. Again, it was just sort of a feature-length version of this story about a very nasty butcher and his young daughter. And uh, I actually, uh, even though I was pleased to see that Noe, who I considered a very gifted filmmaker, was getting a lot of attention, I found I Stand Alone rather disappointing. Somehow he had turned this very intense, uh, sort of over-the-top short film into what I regarded as a very talky and kind of static long film. Still, I was interested 
Kid and Noe's career. And I was very pleased when his most important film came out. And this was in the early 2000s, a movie called Irreversible. Irreversible is an amazing movie. And I have to be very clear about it. Uh, it is one of the masterpieces so far of the 21st century. Uh, the, the, the camera work of it is, is absolutely unprecedented and brilliant and never loses impact for one single second. Uh, the acting of it is magnificent. It is just an extraordinary film. It is also horrifying. It is the story of a rape and a murder, which are presented in the most graphic terms you can possibly imagine. And to make the whole thing even more interesting, the whole story is told backwards. The movie is called Irreversible. It starts with the end of the story and ends with the beginning of the story. An astounding film. Don't see it unless you have nerves of steel. But cinematically, again, it is a masterpiece. It got a lot of attention. It was very controversial. Uh, I regard it again as one of the great films that we've had in the past 20 years. So I thought, well, okay, Noe, Noe is just as brilliant as I thought at the beginning. Then he started to go downhill. He made an interesting movie called Enter the Void, which made a great use of the camera floating through the air during almost the entire movie. Uh, then he made, amazingly, a boring 3D movie about sex called Love, and now he has made another movie called Climax, and that's what I really want to talk about right now. Interestingly, the publicity for Climax, the poster for it, uh, has referenced those earlier films, and I will now tell you what the poster for Climax says. You despised I Stand Alone. You hated Irreversible. You loathed Enter the Void. You cursed Love. Now try Climax. So good old Noe, he certainly does know how to, uh, to, to push people's buttons. Anyway, here's what Climax is. Climax is basically the story of a bunch of young people rehearsing dance routines for some kind of an exhibition or show or something that's coming up. And at the end of their rehearsal, it's very late at night. Uh, and the whole beginning of the movie shows audition tapes with these young people talking about why they love to dance so much. And then it shows a whole lot of their dancing. And it has no way's usual fabulous camera work and a whole lot of really amazing dance. Terrific, uh, terrific pop dancing goes on. Then the rehearsal's over. The young people settle down to just drink some sangria and relax and unwind and chit chat among themselves. And there's flirting and there's small talk and this and that. And gradually they realize that some Somebody has spiked the sangria with what appears to be LSD and everybody starts to get stoned and everybody starts to get paranoid and everybody starts to get really, really, really spaced out. Also, a whole lot of very nasty suspicion begins because not everybody drank the sangria. So who is it who stuck uh, the, the LSD in there? Probably one of the people who didn't drink it. So now we have the stoned people against the very few unstoned people and tempers flare and minds get increasingly out of control. And as the movie proceeds, what began as a sprightly dance movie turns into a total horror movie. And now we know this is really a film by Gaspar Noe. One horrific thing happens after another, and I won't even tell you what all these things are. By the end of the movie, most people are still alive. Many of them are still apparently okay, although it's a little bit hard to tell. But some of them have suffered uh, pretty much unspeakable horrors. Uh, and that is what Climax is about. So Climax is an interesting thing. It is far and away Noe's best movie since Irreversible. Enter the Void has some interesting stuff in it too. But if you're really into the most horrific kind of horror and the most brilliant kind of cinema, see Irreversible. But again, only if you have nerves of not only steel, but uh, some sort of indestructible steel. Uh, Climax is certainly his best movie since Irreversible. Uh, it is too long, which quite a number of critics have complained about, uh, especially just before the end. It just sort of goes on for a while, the camera rolling around in a largely darkened room, and there's really not much to see, and it gets kind of tedious. Aside from that, though, the movie is full of all kinds of cinematic amazements, and I did have, uh, I did find it cinematically very compelling for most of its running time. 
Climax. Now, I want to say something about the reviews for Climax. A whole lot of them have been saying, well, let's just say before I saw the film, I had the impression from some of the early reviews that Noe was, uh, this was the Gaspar Noe with a song in his heart. And I thought, oh, that'll be interesting. You know, people were emphasizing it's a dance movie and it has all these young people chit-chatting and making small talk and flirting. And I was expecting a movie that would be mostly sort of pleasant. And it turns out it's a movie which is not very pleasant and for parts of the way is extremely unpleasant. But I like movies that go to extremes when they do it well. And large parts of Climax are nightmarish in the most effective way you can imagine. So uh, again, cinematically, uh, I found it really quite a fascinating experience, even though it was kind of boring after a while. I interviewed Gaspar Noe back when Irreversible came out, found him to be a very, very smart, and very interesting young director, and I still have high hopes for him, and I'm glad that Climax shows him getting back near the top of cinematic form. I wish that he would calm down and not worry so much about making uh, sort of quote-unquote Gaspar Noe gestures. I mean, there's things in Climax that are just sort of silly. Some of the words that appear on the screen from time to time. And by the way, the opening credits for the movie come about halfway through and the end credits come at the beginning, so we have Gaspar Noe up to his old tricks. Uh, Climax is interesting if you want to see the most adventurous kind of cinema, of cinema imaginable, both in terms of content and in terms of style. Otherwise, you'd be better off to maybe go see the latest superhero movie. And that is my somewhat horrifying story this week, Joe. Somewhat. Thank you very much, David Sterrett. Films in focus. The films Roll Red Roll, Babylon, Climax. Climax. 